part that's going to make it with California Place to Mexico and back to uh, Colombia. I can't even drive yeah, to Colombia. Yeah, so it gotta be I don't have a boat. It got to be flown or shit. There's a great line in the movie Boys in the Hood where Larry Fishburne is saying, hey man, we don't grow it, we don't own any airplanes, we don't have any laboratories, how does it get here? Why does it get here? And that's a very good common sense approach that intuitively the people in South Central understood, but there was something much bigger than them uh, that was moving the whole drug issue and the drug war. My parents were staunch Republicans. Back in the 80s, the big concern was not terrorism, it was communism. The Iran-Contra affair was one of the biggest political scandals in U.S. history. Members of the Reagan administration, headed by Oliver North, engaged in the sale of arms to Iran. The proceeds from these illegal deals were being used to fund the Contras, a right-wing guerrilla group that Reagan referred to as his freedom fighters. The Contras were fighting the Soviet-backed Sandinistas for the domination of Nicaragua. The Iran-Contra is very important in history. We have to remember the fact that Iran-Contra, its mandate was to investigate the sales of missiles to Iran. Former DEA agent Celarino Castillo not only fought in the international effort of the American drug war, he also had the rare opportunity of carrying a camera and recording some of the regrettable actions of the DEA and CIA while they supported President Reagan and Oliver North's Contra movement. George Bush Sr. came to Guatemala on January 13, 1986. And he approached me and asked me what I did uh, there at the uh, U.S. Embassy, what my job description was. And I told him I was a DEA agent working uh, uh, international narcotics investigations. And I told him, look, you know, we have gathered intelligence that the contracts are involved in drug trafficking down in El Salvador. And then he just smiled, shook my hand, and, and walked away from me. And it was then and there that I knew that my government knew that these atrocities were occurring. They were so concerned about giving the guns to Iran and all that stuff. The question should have been asked about all that cocaine flying back over here. In 1986, on American TV, we were all being fed a steady diet of... We're taking down the surrender flag that has flown over so many drug efforts. We're running up a battle flag. This scourge will stop. But regrettably, back in Central America and in the jungle... I remember down in Central America, we were refueling planes full of cocaine coming into the U.S. and uh, it was a CIA uh, operation being run by the White House. At the same time, all of the cocaine from Nicaragua was flowing into the U.S. Freeway Ricky Ross was at his heyday. The average week would at least be two to three million dollars almost guaranteed. Some days we would have two and three million dollar days. After Freeway Rick was arrested, an investigative journalist by the name of Gary Webb uncovered a link that connected him back to the Nicaraguan Contra movement. I read Dark Alliance. I got a, a, a copy uh, personally from Gary Webb himself. And to read the book, it, it, was, it was fascinating for me, you know, to find out that I was connected with the CIA and, and all these high-powered people up in the government. Ricky Ross was just lucky. He just happened to get a source who was connected to the CIA. For a long time in South Central, the buzzword was that the CIA was selling crack. And I said, no, the CIA wasn't selling crack. The CIA was importing cocaine. Ricky Ross got it, turned it into crack, and he sold it. According to Gary Webb's Dark Alliance, when Danilo Blandone was displaced from his home country of Nicaragua, he set off to America to raise money to aid the Contras in ridding his home from the invading Sandinistas. When Ricky Ross was introduced to Blandone, Blandone was in a position to create a pipeline of cocaine that he in turn gave to Ricky Ross on consignment. Which I like the sound of that, you know, because I was always trying to get to the top anyway. Suddenly, some major sources opened up for him. Danilo Blandone, Norwood Meneses, both of whom were tied to the CIA and the Contras, and Gary Webb did a masterful job of uh, breaking those stories and proving with documents that that was the case. Whatever we were running in LA, it was the profit, is, it was going to the contract revolution. I started doing a little research on my own and I read a little bit about Oliver North and the Contras because I never knew what the Contras was before. There's ledgers of, uh, of Oliver North and them actually transporting the cocaine to our country. There's field. Every piece of document that's possible. 
Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. First time dealer and former crip, Leroy Chico Brown was arrested with Rick. Chico walked into a DEA sting operation that was set up to capture and imprison Rick and trade for Rick's old partner, Danilo Blandone. How could this be possible? And then we read through the documents and then that's when Gary Webb started explaining it to us and we was like, everything came together now. One of the most paramount moments, perhaps caused by Gary Webb's Dark Alliance, took place in November of 1996. It was a monumental historic event. I mean, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency was coming to Watts to face the people. Now, we all know that the U.S. government and the CIA supported the Contras and their efforts to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua in the middle 80s. Now, it is alleged the CIA also helped the Contras raise money for arms by introducing crack cocaine into California. Deutsch felt he had to do something to try to uh, deal with the outrage that was foaming all over the country at the time. And of course, it just blew up in his face. CIA fights drugs. CIA does not encourage drugs. I mean, it was, it was actually one of the most monumental blunders of all time, uh, if you think about it. We have no evidence of a conspiracy by the CIA to engage in encouraging drug traffickers in Nicaragua or elsewhere in Latin America. Deutsch was there because of the Gary Webb stories. The Gary Webb stories had sparked a national furor. I would like to have Richie Ross's uh, brother to speak, please. The United States government turned their head and let this cocaine come into the United States of America. Allow Gary Webb to have full access. This whole thing is orchestrated. It was near pandemonium. It was about, I guess, 1,200 people in standing room only in the auditorium. 2,000 people outside listening on loudspeakers. And uh, it was very hard to keep control. I got called on finally, and I said to her very clearly, I was talking, looking right at Deutsch. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, and I work South Central Los Angeles, and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Uh, and I was able to name operations. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. He stumbled and stammered and wrung his hands. If you have information about CIA illegal activity in drugs, you should immediately bring that information to wherever you want, but let me suggest three places. The Los Angeles Police Department. And of course my response was, I started there 18 years ago, sir, and they tried to kill me. Now what do you want me to do? If this information turns up wrongdoing, we will bring the people to justice and make them accountable. The crowd started chanting, we told you, we told you, we told you. And it was a great moment of unity. And it was a healing moment for me, because I'd been out alone for 18 years and didn't really know that, that that kind of support was there for me either. The average person in South Central Los Angeles did not know anything uh, about really how the CIA worked. They had an intuitive sense. That you have a private network run by George Bush and Ali North, not the CIA. You won't find the records in the CIA, they're not there. They're in these private privatized intelligence agencies. Will you pursue that? Will you pursue Ali North and George Bush and the, ever, the massive documentation? All these gentlemen, like this gentleman here, the co-defendant of Ricky Ross. They needed the money to finance the war in Wazza. They had the link. We know that from records now that they sent Blando, who was a CIA operative, CIA, to school for marketing. Marketing the product which we now know is cocaine. Me and Ricky Ross is waiting to get sentenced Tuesday. And she got, what, what, what a judge gonna say to us come Tuesday? Uh, may I just say that the uh, question which was asked of us by the judge was, was Ricky Ross ever a agent or a contract employee? I already knew that from the beginning of, of, of dealing with Danilo Blandon that he was sending supplies and things of that nature, computers, 
and guns in Nicaragua to fight a war. Ricky had already served a five and a half year sentence for dealing crack, but was now given a second 20 year sentence after being set up by his former partner Blandone, while Oliver North walked away as